welcome to this another edition of the classic formula that you and everyone else who listens to this podcast knows. Hundreds of you out there are clamoring for more times from up on the lookout. Now, for those of you who don't know, Up on the Lookout is a Dragon Ball podcast for the difference. Here, my associates and I like to go over Dragon Ball in a more relaxed way. We want to keep things simple and having a very fun little debate. And you can follow our little exploits as well as other little adventures and foibles on our YouTube channel. Just search for Up on the Lookout, a Dragon Ball podcast, and you will be able to find us. We've got some very exciting things that I had on my main channel coming to that channel in the fullness of time. All to do with fan fiction, I can assure you. If you like that, then I think you'll like this. And joining me for another podcast is my trusty sidekick, Havrock. Hello. Uh, oops, I did it again. Oh, and what happened again in this one, because I think it's safe to say that you know the topic for this very podcast, is that Dragon Ball Super Chapter 76. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Vegeta did not lose. And... I put that in the title of my main review that you can check out on the Master Quex channel. No L for Vegeta. And people thought that was a spoiler. No, that's just a statement. That's just a general thing of like, no, Vegeta has not lost. I I say Vegeta got the D. Wait. Uh... Oops. Oh, oh, oops. <laughs> well, he, no, no, it's the Black Knight from Holy Grail. It's like, all right. We'll call it a draw. So it's that that's the way I describe it. But that's not the main point of the chapter. So obviously there are going to be spoilers here, but you're all familiar with the drill. We're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super Chapter 76 more in depth than we did on the main channel, because when that manga chapter comes out at 4 p.m. my time, I've I've already made a couple of things like the intro beforehand, like a few hours previously. So that saves me about like 15 minutes. So it's a mad dash to get that video done in an hour. So it's Geekdom and I have a little race, like see who can get it done first. Most of the time he's really quick on the ball. So, you know, we want to get the, these reviews out to you all. But this one, we feel like we could take a little time just to process over like the next day. But have a look. I know that you've got some thoughts about this. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think that's one of the most divisive chapters of Super I, oh, I yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, there's no in-between people either hate it or love it. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I, there were hundreds of comments on my video, and uh, the vast majority of them were up in arms, but in a good way. As in, they were, like, seeing this as, oh, this is a, a chapter that actually brought some things from past instances in the story back to relevance and we'll go over those um later on in the podcast but i'd say my initial view on this chapter is like oh, okay right this i finally can say this is the end of the first act first act is done now we're going to get into the second act of the arc of like okay granola is hopefully again hopefully going to calm down and realize Okay, there may be more to this. Next one is going to be one big flashback. I'm calling it. Oh yeah, of course. It's going to be understanding. Well, okay, we saw the flashback and of course we saw Granola's mum. And as soon as I saw that, I was going, oh no, in R34. Oh no. Oh, well, oh, no. oh no. Oh no, please no. <laughs> but I, it does make me intrigued though. I, I'll, we'll briefly talk about Granola's mum because you only see her in a couple of panels. Uh, okay, cool. There is a, a parent's motif. Of course, there's a parent's motif. That is a little bit cliche, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all good. It's helped that it's it to try and humanize Granola. And to be honest, he's been dehumanized quite a lot recently. So this is a little bit in the other going the other direction. I just say that it's fine. And I'd like to see a little more about it and where she went. Like she was in the in the church as well. So what happened to her? Did she die at the same time? Did she sacrifice herself? Or did something happen afterwards that mean that she wasn't there? Because Monaito doesn't mention her at all. But again, that's we'll save that for that big reveal later. But I'd say the biggest thing that we need to talk about, because we mentioned it before, Vegeta. In this chapter, our mind is the biggest, well, second biggest divide 
in this uh, chapter, or would you say the biggest? It's it, it, top two, definitely. But which would you say was it the biggest point of contention? I, or the think, I, I, th- I think it is the biggest. The second yeah. one is the reveal at the end. But but like, it all depends. You know, what do you project on Vegeta as a character? And yes, there are some things that seem redundant and repetitive but at the end it gives us some great pretty great scenes and proves our point of vegeta's motivation through this arc all the time uh, one, one thing that i must say that i can kind of agree on on you know critique is that vegeta is willing to throw his life away like this when having family that's getting kind of old but the other stuff is in my opinion is very like beneficial to his character growth mm. Yeah, I feel like I, that action I'm okay with. I just think the dialogue was a little bit, a eh, little bit wishy-washy. Just not quite sure about that. I think that could have done with something a bit more grandiose, like the whole thing about dying as a Saiyan warrior. But I do, I, I was okay with that bit of like, oh, I am sorry, Lord Beerus, I couldn't bring myself to bring the back of there. That bit was fine. But the fact of like, oh, well, I'm not going to try. And Goku was kind of, oh no, I can't get close. That was a little weird, but not too weird because I imagine things were happening like really quickly and Granola is insane at this point. Like he's gone, oh, to hell with Frieza. I'm just going to kill us both. And Goku's sort of like, oh, uh, um, okay. I better be careful. It's like the whole semi-perfect, oh, if you touch me, I'll explode, that kind of thing. It's sort of like that. you got to be careful. So I'll forgive that part somewhat. So it was a little bit precarious, especially after what Granola had been doing the last, I don't know, five chapters right now at this point. Yeah, but but but, but again, like you, you see that it has a purpose. Like you see that all things that like this chapter to, to me shows that... Uh, it's no accident that Vegeta chose not to like eliminate Granola when he could, and like, like I I think that the quote that cements that that it's like you think you survive all this time just to take revenge on us. There is nothing more to your life. Like this is like this is the moment when you realize, yeah, he was trying to get through to him. Like Vegeta is trying to help this guy. Like the point that many people are missing, he's not trying to kill him. Like, okay, Granola is insane, but to be fair, he hasn't done anything wrong yet. He hasn't ha- hurt anyone that much. He hasn't killed anyone, and Vegeta. Being at Sundere, he won't just, you know, try to reason with him with war- with kind words. No, Vegeta is trying to help this this uh, this overpowered idiot. Whilst also having a little bit of fun at the same yeah, time. Yeah, of course, of, of course. course. It, it's, he's not Goku who's just going to, like, trap Broly with that angelic kind of sphincter thing and going, you're not evil, you know, I can tell. And uh, no, Vegeta's going like, I'm going to beat some sense into you. I'm going to do you a... F- Excuse me? Never! <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, he's going to have some fun with this. Of course he is. And he's found this new power, and it's actually kind of thrilling. And there was a good comment, actually, in the comments. Like, Ultra Ego is Margin Vegeta, but Chaotic Neutral. Not like Chaotic Evil. So um, I can't remember, the, the, for the life of me, the name of the commenter, but that is a really good point. So if you're listening out there, good job. That really makes sense. And it, it, it's all part of the plan. Vegeta is, of course, going to deck Granola and the Schnoz. He's got to defend himself. But this is the thing about the chapter I love the most, is that Vegeta had a complete plan, not just to like try and talk sense, but he has to do it in the most grandiose way possible, because clearly he's realized that Granola is not going to be reasoned with just words alone. Uh, or because he's constantly all the time he even threw away his uh, technically best friend oatmeal or only friend um is his partner in crime so that's kind of a big deal but it all comes to a head with that moment okay you're not gonna listen to me i'm gonna take the fight to the city and i don't care if you're trying to tell me no you're going to realize that what you're turning into is everything that you despise just wanton destruction, causing fear and panic, albeit with just a couple of people, but still, it's a semblance of what you've been 
languishing over for the last 40 years. You're turning into that. Stop it. I just feel like in my predictions video that I did a few days ago, I said that one of the predictions would be the Shigarians would banish Granola or would not have him welcome anymore. I feel that that could be the case because at this moment, Granola could have just relented and just like paused for a moment or flown away to take the flight out of the city. He didn't do that. He just carried on. He actually got angrier yeah, to the point where he was going to basically destroy the planet. Yeah, the strongest guy in the universe. And he's going to concentrate this energy into what looks like an, a TH death bomb. That probably would have blown up not just a planet, probably the entire local system. To, to remind people that, uh, that you know, Granola uh, won. He's on his last legs. They say that, that like Granola is at his limit. Like, like Vegeta choose to not defend. Like, I feel that was a needed development for, for, for the character. And yeah, like Vegeta being being at Sun at Sundere to Goku, but in this particular case, I think he just wanted to, you know, to help this guy uh, his own way because he felt that Goku doesn't get granola like he did. Because, the, as we said, there are multiple parallels between those two. Goku never really missed his Saiyan heritage. Vegeta kinda did. Yeah. And Goku's only starting to understand what it means to be a Saiyan properly, like really, only recently with Broly. Um, and what uh, you're right. No, Vegeta was probably concerned that Goku would get in the way, maybe and maybe destroy Granola or make Granola do something rash before Vegeta could actually get to that point where he feels like he could talk Granola down. You know, Goku was getting in the way. And so I feel like he was getting in the way of the plan. And I think that actually makes, um, that makes everything make sense because everyone, a lot of people were like going, well, why is Vegeta be acting like this? Why is he going back to his old self? And I'm like, it's okay. Goku's aware of this and saying, what, what, what's with the old attitude for all of a sudden? Vegeta also realized, and it's it, like, it, it's it's a parallel to both show and mythological Loki, that there is that idea that Loki in Norse mythology, right, is that being that is an obstacle for heroes. Like, Loki always loses, but makes the other characters grow thanks to him. Like, he, 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 like Loki is the rite of pass passage for for the other, you know, other beings to, you know, to realize their full potential. And this is what Vegeta does here, because not only he tries to save Granola, but also he is the one to like trying to teach him respect to fighting. And, and 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 you can and you can see that like like for him fighting is something really important and for granola being such technical about it and like you know not not appreciating the power that he has it's also something that I I, I feel that Veg that Vegeta can teach him like if you think about it like Vegeta can also realize like granola is really strong they don't know that he has shortened his life like if Vegeta can get him on their side, they they have a very, they have very uh, good uh, ally against Frieza. Like heck, like with with Vegeta, like with Granola being around and be like being a foil to Frieza, Vegeta wouldn't be wor uh, worried as much about uh, Frieza, you know, because he knows that there is like a very powerful being somewhere in space that also th that could keep Frieza in check or even get rid of him. So all of that I think was very very technical, very specific in a way. And 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 it it was built up, you know? Hmm. No, definitely. I uh I it, it kind of makes me wonder what's going to happen in the next chapters cuz they're still the heaters and they're going to get the dragon balls. You just wonder whether they might have actually sensed that Granola's not done what he was supposed to do. And it's like, oh, okay, we'll just wish for the power away from him. Take the power away and either just take it away just for the sake of it or um, just give it to gas. That could always be, yeah, a little bit of a twist. So that means Granola then does not have the power anymore, but he still has only got like three years left to live. It's definitely the biggest point of contention. Okay, that, no, the way you said it, that's actually fair enough. So 
I suppose the next thing we can talk about is, of course, the reveal at the end. And that, of course, is Bardock has some people thinking it's the first time he's been mentioned in the series, like in the manga series ever. Not quite. There was a non-diegetic moment in the Frieza saga where Bardock does appear in a panel. And that was mainly because Toriyama was like, that, wow, that Bardock special was really good. I'm just going to add that to the lore. There you go. I like that at the time, like back in 1991. And now Bardock is, for the Broly movie, Toriyama goes, oh yeah, Bardock was cool. I'm going to make my own version. And he made the Minus version. So, and that's Toriyama's one wholesale, whereas the Bardock that everybody fanboys and fangirls over is one devised by Toei and Takao Koyama. And Toriyama is just like us, was going, that's cool. I like this character. So, yeah, that's that's a misconception that Toriyama was a, the creator of Bardock the entire time because, again, the whole dubbism of, you know, Bardock being a brilliant scientist and all that stuff, you know, stemmed from some kind of kernel of truth at the time. Yeah, and I'm not sure like who provided the concept art, but I don't, I don't remember it being Toriyama. I, 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 I'm not sure who. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Katsuyoshi Nakatsuru. You know, the guy who does like he does a lot of concept art for Toei, so he could have he could have easily had a hand in it. Yeah, but th- don't quote us on that. Like we are not. Sure. No, 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 no. It's, it's, we don't know. If you if you people in the comments do know, then feel free to add it. But you know. My bet it would have probably had something to do with either Yamamura or Nakatsuru at the time. My best guess. But yeah, Bardock in the story, that blew people's minds. And mostly in a good way for multiple factors. I mean, first of all, Bardock is going to be mentioned in the actual manga properly outside of the cameo panel. Um, Also, the fact that Goku is actually going to find out about his father from somebody who actually met him, not Frieza. And the, the, the reaction from Vegeta clearly knows that he knows about Bardock. He knows of Bardock in some way. Well, of course, because he was probably one of the few examples of a low-class warrior actually going up to becoming a mid-class warrior simply through power. The only way, in my head canon, to placate Bardock. Yeah, he'd never be a Saiyan elite. Of course not. You could never make him a Saiyan elite like... Nappa is sort of? Only because he's a hanger on a Vegeta? I mean, yeah, Nappa is officially a mid-class warrior, but in the eyes of everybody else, because he's the assistant to Vegeta, he's as good as an elite in many people's minds. This will be interesting, but I know that a lot of people are going to be going like, oh my god, uh, why is Bardock being nice to people? I, I'm sorry if I'm putting that voice on for effect, but it's sort of like, Don't jump the gun again, folks. This could easily be just like Bardock going like, is that it? Just like a kid, a woman and an old man? Ugh, not worth my time. Somebody mentioned, I think you might have mentioned this, Hav, that this could have been the thing uh, where, and the Broly movie and in Minus, they just come back from that, from Planet Serial. This was kind of the thing that, set up the gut feeling that Bardock had. Yeah, that, that oh, Frieza eliminated civilians and they weren't that warlike and because he, he deemed them a threat. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this could be a, a diversion or something like that. Also, also like, like to me, one of the weirdest things I see is like, people love the original Bardock, but they constantly want to reconcile Bardock with, uh, with Goku. How would that work if Bardock w- w- was, you know, like, effectively a-, a child killer and genocider? Like, guys, if you, like, if you want, if you want Goku to have any kind of reconciliation with Bardock, right? Or with his story, like, he has to have any sort of redeeming values. Yes. It, it happens all the time in our roundtable live streams. Every week we do them. And we take what if requests and almost every week we get one. Well, what if Bardock went with Goku to Earth? And it's like, he wouldn't stay. He's not the kind of guy. He'd be just like, okay, my kid's going to be safe there. Okay, I'm out of here. Peace. Like, he'd come back every now and again just to say, oh, you still alive? 
cool. See ya. And I feel that it's not that watering down of his, you know, warrior and ruthless persona. If, if like, if you give him like maybe not a soft spot, but like if he saves, you know, somebody that's not a warrior from time to time. Yeah, if it's not worth it, or he's clearly well, what? What would be the point? You know, what's the point of Bardock is effective. He's not ruthless. He's not evil. He's effective. Yeah, he's a he's a warrior, but he is not. He's not unnecessarily cruel, in my opinion. And and like that's not uh, again. Like I don't think that's that, that that's such a big of deviation from his personality. And honestly, makes him a little a little bit more deeper than like the super edgy version we got in, in in the original special like the original special is good but it's it's a product of its time and sometimes it's like it's it's so edgy yeah it 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 really is yeah like i i i have watched it recently just you know just just for this chapter when the spoilers start, started to flowing around and i'm like even 10 years ago I would say that it was cool, but like watching it now as a 30 year old man, I'm like, mm, I think it start, started to age not that well, you know, like, like there are certain elements that are super interesting, but uh, I can see flows of, on the surface even more. I didn't mind the Minus Bardock uh, that much, and honestly, like, like you guys also need to take take this with a grain of salt because I'm not that big fan of a Bardock either. I think he's one of the most overrated characters in the arc, uh, not in the arc in, in in the in the entire Dragon Ball. But on the other hand, like if he's getting used in interesting way, then yeah, sure, why not? The Bardock special has its place in Dragon Ball history. It's it was a turning point and it made a lot of fans. So its place within the actual lore and franchise of in general. It should not, yeah, that should be respected, and we do. But, you know, again, it, it, to be fair, it's a 30-year-old movie, and it's only now starting to look a bit frayed around the edges. That's good going. It's not like Resurrection F. Like, three years after it came out, it was looking a bit rough. So th that's good going. 10 times more durability than Resurrection F. Good, good job. Good job, Bardock. You did good. But another thing that people are going to be really excited about is like, oh, okay, maybe not excited about, but like apprehensive or like waiting with bated breath is how Goku's going to react to this. It's like, this could be good or bad. This could go two ways. Um, This could either go with... Goku understanding and sort of like wanting to know more or he could be just like neat or just like or just go huh neat so what are we saying like completely barely acknowledging it like but I feel like this is the best opportunity because like um it'd be a way for him to find out more about his father he might have mentioned about Gine so maybe you might find out about Goku might have found out about his mum like his parents in general, granted through a third party and word of mouth, but it's something. And I think people want Gine and Goku to somehow meet in one way or another. Yeah, and but at the same time, you need to remember that uh, that goodness in Goku must have come from somewhere, not only the head injury, like, come on. Like, 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 like you can say a lot about head injuries, but, like, it's like he's not... He's not that, I would say, he, 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 like, like, like the head injury didn't affect him that much. I, I would say because he, like he's developing normally for the most of time. My, uh, my big, uh, like my biggest gripe with this is like, A, Gina is precious. B, if Gina wanted to be with someone like Bardock, he needed to have any kind of, uh, again, redeeming factors. Yeah, exactly. Just uh, the fact that he actually bothered to go and visit her when he got back. Yeah, that's 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 got to show some level of care or empathy, you know. I mean, and also a little bit of recklessness, but you know, in a way that's kind of like thrilling in a way. But yeah, 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 yeah. I still think that there was one bad thing bandied about that like, Gine was part of Bardock's squad at one point, but she was too weak and got demoted or something like that, or she quit. 
I think that's the case, but I'm not sure. But I like I like that idea in a way. But anyway, um, I think people are going to be excited about finding out what's going to happen. I am happy that in this chapter that Gogeta did not show up. I'm like, that would have been terrible for Gogeta to... If you're going to have fusion in the manga, fair enough. That's fair point. But you cannot have Gogeta in the first act. Why would you do that? Why would you throw away a fusion at the beginning? Unless you've got something big happening. And one thing that uh, that could be a big thing happening is that Vegeta saying, oh, this ultra ego thing has no limits. Uh, some people are thinking, oh, are we going to like have a, an ultra instinct omen? Like this is ultra ego omen and then we're going to have mastered ultra ego. Well, that's pure ultra ego. Like maybe we might have like uh, just an even more powerful version. Don't know. Even a bigger forehead. I, I did find it funny that the super ego term was d- bandied about. And Granola saying that out of effect. Yeah, that, that was funny. Just to kind of go with the id, ego, super ego type of thing. That, that was cool. But yeah, I think we can sum up things up now by just saying that this chapter, it, yeah, it divided a lot of people, but really it was necessary. And it is the conclusion of the first part of the, um, of the, of the saga. And hopefully this will mean that Granola will actually calm down. Hopefully. I mean, obviously, things could easily go one way and that Granola just goes, oh, I still don't care. Ah! But then that would be you basically just becoming Broly. You just become OG Broly. Okay. All right. He has merely descended into saying merely a single word. Yo. Say and some of that stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of hopes and... Hopefully we'll have a little bit more predictions. Um, yeah, and, you know, guys, feel free to tell us in the comments whenever you like it, whenever you, whenever you did it, like, what we missed, like, what what arguments speak to you, what makes you like or dislike this particular chapter, because, you know, at the end of the day, I feel that uh, it's better uh, for a chapter to invoke emotions, both good and bad, and ju- than being just meh. And the next one, please, you know? And people being passionate, that's ultimately the goal. To be, just care. It, you know, you can like it, you don't have to like it. Just care. Just care about it. Let's show passion. Like, that's better. That's better, arguably, than just being like, eh, okay, that was a thing. When's the next chapter? But th- th- this is, again, why I believe that they should really release the manga every two weeks. I don't mind a 20-page chapter every two weeks, because... You know, it's, um, I mean, obviously, you know, more videos, more videos for people to watch, but it's just that there's less time to stew on things. I mean, if it's a really good chapter, then fine, doesn't really matter. But if it's been a contentious chapter, like the last one, four weeks of going over the same thing, it's going to make people, you know, sear and fester with their negative emotions. That's not great. So... Yeah, a quicker, I think a quicker release schedule would have been better, but hey, I'm not the controller of the manga, so we just gotta take what we're given. Yeah, and hope for the best. Chapter 76, I'd say turning point. Turning point could lead to some very interesting things happening and was very much necessary. If this had gone on for another chapter, I think it would have been like, okay, this is getting a little bit long. I mean, admittedly, a uh, 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 Moro, um, proved to us and confirmed that most general fights tend to last for no more than two chapters. This one's gone on for three. So, uh, technically five if you count the Goku fight. Uh, yeah, this is definitely something that we needed to, you know, move on to the next bit. But, uh, I think that about wraps things up. So, have thank you very much for joining me once more. Thank you, it's always a pleasure. Yep, and uh, if you out there enjoyed this discussion, feel free to like and subscribe wherever you found it, as well as giving it a follow, and just look forward to seeing more content on Up on the Lookout or Masako X or wherever you found it. So until next time, everybody, be sure to be safe out there, hope you're well, and we'll see you again very soon. Ta-da!